All right, so I want to walk through the code for the notebook app. If you'll recall, this um, is the app that uh, stores in a SQL, a local SQLite database. It stores a, a sequence of notes. Each note has text and a list of images. And those images are file names. They're referred to image files on the local file system. So we'll go through some of the code and we'll write some of the code because that makes it more exciting. Um, and so we're going to start in the main activity. Uh, you know, we're going to grab a, a view model. And one of the things that uh, we're going to see in this app, I'm not going to spend uh, a huge amount of time on it, but there's a fair amount of sort of fragment management. So there's backstack, there's uh, changing the title. Um, so the changing the title um, is something that the main activity has to do um, one way or another. And uh, the way I've decided to do it in this app is to have some live data that uh, tracks the current title. And we are going to, and here you can see an onCreate, you know, we do the normal thing, save the instant state, set content view, set the support action bar. And then we are going to observe uh, the title. And whenever we get a new one, we are going to set the, the title. So what do you think goes up here? Well, we want to grab our support action bar. And oh, title looks good. And set it to the new title. Why is it complaining? Oh, support action bar can be null. So let's make it safe. So support action bar is null, we don't do anything, but otherwise we're gonna set the title. Okay, that makes sense. We are observing live data. And I'll, I'll pop into the, uh, I mean, the, the view model is a little messy, uh, but let's, let's just take a look at, here's title. So it's mutable live data. Starts out by saying the, the title of the notebook. And there's, there's nothing, this is pretty, this is like, as vanilla as it gets for, uh, for live data. But it's nice to have that in the view model because that way all the fragments uh, have access to the view model, they're sharing it, and so they can request different titles. The trick is going to be if we go from one fragment that has, you know, title X, and that runs a new fragment as title Y, that's easy. But then when this guy uh, gets popped, we need to go back to title X. So we need to make sure that we have some listener that uh, knows when the, the fragment is being popped. Um, <clears throat> okay, there's a, a bunch of photos set up. There's a whole other video about how photos are handled in this application. So I'm not gonna talk about it in this video. And then kind of, well, let's, let's take a look at activity main. Uh, so, this is your standard co coordinator layout with an app bar and, and uh, um, embedded toolbar, and then a fragment container view, sort of like a frame view that's just the main frame. And so this is uh, sort of the style that we do these single activity uh, applications. They have one frame, different fragments swap into that frame. Uh, your Reddit application was also like this. Um, yeah, just to give you a sense of sort of what's coming. Let's take a look. Um, so yeah, for the, the home fragment, I've got a, a text view or recycler view and a floating action button. So yeah, you can look through the, um, the, the layouts for this uh, uh, project are not, not super intense. So, um, uh, we've started out our initial uh, activity and then we want to put the home fragment in there and we're not even going to put anything on the back stack. If you back stack off the home fragment, you're done. Um, you know, we, we could have put a splash screen or there, there's some, there are reasons to uh, occasionally um, put things in before the home fragment, but in our case, we're just going to put the home fragment in and go. So let's switch the home fragment because this has, um, a uh, bunch of the, the sort of the main sort of uh, 
uh, logic for displaying a list of nodes. Okay, so again, we're grabbing a view model, we're doing this thing where we're telling the fragment what layout uh, it, it has. This is a relatively new uh, feature, and I'll, I'll show you the advantage of that in a second. Um, I've worked this code a little bit. Um, it was usually it was using delegation in a way that was sort of fancy but sort of annoying, and so uh, I've uh, made it into a simple initialization function that creates this uh, item touch helper, and the item touch helper has these two uh, 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 methods to override. This one allows us to reorder items in a list which we're not using, and this one allows us to to swipe to delete. And so swipe to delete, not surprisingly, uses the remove note at. So um, one question that arises in your applications is sort of how do you talk about data? And when we are um, displaying a list in an adapter, the position in the adapter makes a lot of sense to talk about your data in that way. And so that's the way that the uh, fragments will communicate with the view model in terms of what notes they're interested in. We could have used you know, the database primary key for the note um, and actually sort of had a version of the code that sort of did that. And I didn't like that so much because different databases might use different primary keys and that's sort of like the database's business and leaking it out to the rest of your application is sort of unpleasant. Uh, there are reasons you could just have like the object itself, like just pass in a note. There are reasons to, to not do that as, as well. So a, a position is sort of a nice pointer or a nice way to identify a note. And so here, this is swipe to delete. Okay, now here is, uh, I had something not fully worked out in, in my life. Uh, and that is why synthetic imports did not work for me in fragments. And the reason is because by default, you are given on create view. And in on create view, you have to call the inflator. The view is not created in on create view. You are creating the view and return it. And in that case, your Kotlin synthetic imports will not work. And that code is usually pretty straightforward. Usually, and it's it's sort of rigmarole. You have to grab an inflator and blah blah blah. So what's nice about passing in this layout to the fragment uh, constructor is that then I can just override on view created, and in on view created, my synthetic imports work. I don't have to rigmarole a uh, an inflator. I don't have to do any manual inflation. And this, this to me is, is much nicer. So I have to call super on view created, but then I'm off to the races. So what's my first race that I want to run is what happens when someone clicks the floating action button? Well, it creates a new node. And you know we already saw up here, here I'm calling remove node at. You might guess what I called uh, create node. Oh, whoops, sorry. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I left myself a, left myself a hint. Um, yeah, so, uh, so um, I need to uh, create a new note. That sends me into the uh, edit note layout. So this is a fragment which has an edit text up, up top and it has a recycler view down here, and it has these buttons, save, cancel, and camera. So we thought, saw those in the demo. I need to swap this fragment in in order to do my editing. And I need to tell, or in order to do my creating. And I need to tell uh, the, um, uh, the fragment that I'm swapping in that I'm doing a creation, not an editing. So I'm actually gonna use the same fragment to do both editing and creation but I'm going to uh, change the, the title. I'm going to use the same code. I'm going to change the title to slightly different values. Oops. I mean, I here. I am. OK. So uh, great. Oh, no, sorry. I was in, I was in home frag. Home frag, yes. So, so um, I need to create a view. So I'm going to uh, grab my parent fragment manager. 
because I'm in a fragment. And I'm going to uh, begin a transaction because that's what you do. And then I'm going to add. And I'm going to add to the mainframe because again, I've got a, a single a single uh, activity application, and so I'm swapping in different fragments. And I'm going to make myself uh, a note edit. And I'll give it a negative one, but we'll, we'll see. I don't even think it's necessary. Um, so what is this? Uh, well, hold on a second. And then uh, let's add the back stack. And I don't need to put in, I don't need to put in any tag in here. And okay. So what is this doing? This is saying, if I click the floating action button, run note edit, and send it negative one. So that's a negative one maybe seems a little bit weird. So let's go to note edit, note agment, note edit is also a fragment. And it's got this companion object. And the companion object has this new instance method, which is the, the way we've seen to create um, fragments. It takes a position um, parameter and it saves that position parameter uh, in, that, in a bundle. That position parameter, the default value is negative one. What that means is it's a new node. So what am I saying? I'm saying I've got a list of notes and this note is not on this list. So it's off here. And so I'm going to use this view to create the note. And then when I save it, I'm, I'm going to assign it a position. And you can see an on view created here. Um, I am grabbing the position from the arguments object. I'm doing a get int on the position key, and my default value is negative one. And if it's negative one, I'm going to set the title to be new note. Otherwise, I'm going to be editing the note. Because these two things are, are sort of identical, they're just, they're sort of different start, start um, cases. Well, and you have, you have to call different functions in the, in the database because the database actually has to create a new note here, and here it's updating the note. Um, yeah, so you know, when our position is, is uh, minus one, we're gonna be actually creating a note, otherwise we're gonna be updating the note. Okay, but let me, let me go back to the home fragment because I, I don't wanna, I'll, I'll, I'll go, I'll keep sort of looping around, I don't wanna sort of bite off too much in any one excursion. Okay, so yeah, so that is uh, that. That's our that's our onclick listener uh, to create a new note. Let's uh, launch this uh, note edit with a position negative one. Okay, not bad. Now uh, the uh, in general for this fragment, this view, I am uh, showing a list of notes. So I have a note adapter. The note adapter takes a list of notes from the database and adapts it to the screen which is my uh, recycler view. And so the notes adapter takes in a view model and it, it, it asks for this Lambda. This Lambda is what do I do if I wanna edit a note? So I tell the notes adapter is gonna tell me what the position is that the user clicked on. The user clicked on a position and I'm gonna say, hey user, you wanna edit this note? Parent fragment manager, begin transaction, main frame, I'm going to add uh, a note edit fragment. This time I'm going to pass it the position you passed me because that's the one we want to edit. The view model is uh, maintaining this list, so it knows the positions are all consistent. Uh, and we'll do things that way. So in the in the application here, you know, when I do create, see it says new note. When I do edit, oh, it says edit note. So that's what's going on there. Can I just, uh... yeah. All right, okay. Um, yeah, so long press to, to, uh, to edit the, uh, to edit the note. Okay, and then, um, you know, this, this stuff is, is this just annoying uh, recycler view stuff to get the dividers in between the different, Thing. So that's that's not interesting. 
Um, here were uh, the adapter that we created, this uh, notes adapter were assigned to the recycler view. This recycler view comes from uh, the lab. Right? So this, we call this recycler view, recycler view. Probably should be like notes RV, but um, close enough. Fragment. Okay. Uh, we hook up the swipe to delete. So this is all this is all sort of plumbing. This should look familiar to you. Okay, next next thing that we actually want to do. Um, we return to our fragment. So this is the um, so this says notebook. Then it says new note. And when this guy starts, it just assigns to the view model, you know, the live data, right? So that's easy to change. But then when, when we pop him, how do we remember to reset the, the title? That's what we need to do here. So we're going to do a, um, uh, I, th I think we might've done this for uh, Reddit. There is an on backstack change listener. You might think that there is just a, a callback that uh, gets called when your fragment rises to the top, because we had this fragment, we added another fragment on top of it, and then it got popped off. So you might think you get a callback at that point. You don't, uh, so that's unfortunate. But we can work around it because we can add a back stack change listener. So this is going to get anytime if you push or pop. This is going to get called because it's a backstack uh, change listener. And we also did this trick in Reddit. We can say parent fragment manager dot backstack entry count if that equals zero. So then I'm back to um, my home fragment, which recall we didn't add to the backstack from uh, when we when we. Uh, pushed it on in the activity. So if it equals zero, then uh, view model set title. Oh, no, no. So jump to conclusions there. Set, set title, come on, set title. We want to set title to, my set to notebook. Fine. And we also need to toggle on uh, empty notes here. Oops. I'll get, I'll get to toggle that too. That's, that's, just, that, that's actually super annoying too. Or not, not, not on Sunday. Um, okay, and then, uh, yeah, and then, uh, uh, actually, can, can you really see? No, it doesn't matter. So uh, we'll also do, um, a adapter notified data set change. So, okay, so let's unpack this a little bit. So I've got this list of three um, images. And I come in here. Um, now I'm in my edit uh, text. We can, you know, we can change the text. That's one of the things we can edit. We can also edit these this image list. And I do that by long clicking to delete. So now I've only got two, and if I save them, I come back, oh my gosh, I've got two. When I come back, I need to call this notified data set change because I need to redraw what's on the screen. I could try to keep track of you know, what's changed, and try, but forget about that. Like the user called edit, uh, edit note, we're just gonna redraw the screen when they, when they come back. I think that's fine. But we do wanna see this uh, updated. Because yeah, I mean, like technically, if, if this had been collapsed, we would not have had to do uh, a notified data set chain because you wouldn't have seen it, but uh, that's more trouble at this point. So we'll notify data set change, come on, friends. Uh, that's good. So this is what we do when we return to the home fragment. Remember, this is still in the, the home fragment sort of initialization on view created. So the other thing that we need to do is the list of notes that is our main job to display, we are getting that via live data from the view model. So we need to observe that live data. And whenever we see that live data change, we submit the list to the adapter and we, we toggle empty notes. And <laughs> toggle empty notes is such a pain in the butt. Um, so 
Android doesn't have a way to tell a recycler view, when you're empty, display this. When you're not empty, stop displaying that. That's what we would want. It should just be part of the recycler view. You should, you know, you should be able to say like set, I don't know, like a layout or something. I don't know, whatever. We don't have that. So what we do have to do is do, do, do. this text view is the empty notes view. It is in this frame layout along with this recycler view. So the two are right on top of each other. This is um, this is wrap content, wrap content, but uh, oh, but the center horizontal and it's got a big margin top. So. So, um, and it's got a big uh, text that says no notes found. And so that's why um, right now we have a note, we get rid of it, oh, no notes found. And then when we create a note, then it's gone. So th that's what that toggle thing is. It's, it's, it's kind of annoying. Um, you get rid of it. And th th that's sort of Android's fault. It's Android's fault that it's annoying. Um, they should have had a better way uh, okay, but uh, this is our lot in life, and so we we toggle empty notes. We have to toggle empty notes anytime the notes could have changed, which you know when we're coming back, uh, uh, the notes could have changed when uh, the the number of note when the the live data refreshes. It might be refreshing to zero length, so we need to go. You know, in that case, we're transitioning from having a note to not having a note. You can transition from not having a note to having a note. Anyway, that's what that is. So that's that's not too bad. We should maybe take a look at Notes Adapter. Notes Adapter is a fairly straightforward adapter. Uh, the adapters in this project I've done list adapters. Um, you know, it, there's some advantages to list adapters. There's some advantages to um, having to call uh, notify data set changed explicitly. As it is, we call notify data set changed explicitly. You have to do that in some cases anyway. The list adapter, it has this built-in diff utilities, which is, is sort of nice. Um, the, the, the problem with the, the list adapters is the old list and the new list have to be distinct references. So you can't grab the old list, sort of change one element, and then send it to the notes adapter. You have to create a new list, delete one element from the new list, and then send that adapter so that the, the, um, the list adapter has the old and new versions. And uh, you know they're the same if they have the same primary key and they're the same contents of all the contents match. Um, yeah, this, um, I will maybe explain this in a different video because this is gonna be long enough, but um, we, we need to keep some state as to whether uh, uh, a uh, item is expanded or not. Um, and this does it. And it does it technically incorrectly. And we fix this in the Firebook version. But I, actually, it's kind of interesting the way it's incorrect. Like, it's so interesting that I actually want to I put it here. So you can read this note. This is sort of an advanced topic. Um, uh, this is my date formatting, which um, I think I messed up somewhere. Um, and uh, let's see. OK, so uh, you know, this is the, so, so sorry. So coming, coming down here to the parts of a, um, the way I like to write adapters, I like to make onbind view holder. I like it to be basically this exact code, not depending, not quite get note, but you know, sort of get list or get something, the holder adapter position, holder.bind, and uh, on create view holder is this very simple thing. So um, sort of whenever you, uh, you see an adapter in my world, most of it is boilerplate code. The key is bind. Bind is where all the action uh, happens. You know, there's actually a fair amount of action in this in this adapter because it's it's a little bit of a complicated data structure. But bind is the star of any adapter. All right. So first of all, what what do we have? Uh, let's let's take a look at. Uh, so this is. Oops. Um, 
Oh, there we go. This is a note list row. So this is um, this is my list of, of notes, and this is one row in that list. Yeah, I can see the expanded state is not is, is about in there. Okay. Um, yeah. So note list row. Okay, and this is, you know, moderately complicated. Oh, yeah, I was excited about this fact. So, you know, you can click the chevron and that's cool. And, you know, if you cl short click this, it's okay because there's a long click. But if you, if you short click the timestamp or you short click the um, picture area, it, it blinks at you to sort of tell you, like, I see that you clicked and nothing will happen. It's a selectable item background does. Okay. Sorry, you gotta you gotta amuse yourself some way when you spend a lot of time with your code. So what do we have going on here? We have uh, an image button, which is the chevron. Uh, that's this uh, a chevron is like a an arrow. It goes up up or down. Um it's it's got you know a little bit of layout stuff, the constraint. I mean, you know, this is just layout. I've got a timestamp. For the text view, I've got text view for the, uh, the for the note, and I've got this image view, which is um, you know my sort of preview, and I call that pick one IV. So it's like you know the one picture preview. So the text view, okay. And then this we haven't really seen before. Um, I threw in uh, a recycler view, and um, I do this trick to either uh, be expanded or be uh, collapsed. And when you're expanded, you see the recycler view. And when you're collapsed, you don't see the recycler view. So that's a, a neat trick to look forward to. There are notes attached to it. OK, and then this is like, you know, date formatting. Blah, blah, blah. OK, so bind. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, I, was, I was going through the the, uh, the pieces of our layout. So we have the text, which is um, the, the text for the note. We have the chevron, which is the image button. We have the timestamp, which is the, the timestamp text view. Let me show the timestamp. We have the, um, the row uh, um, recycler view, which is sometimes hidden, sometimes not. And we have this pick one IV, which is the um, preview. OK, so let's take a look at note, and let's, let's think about it. So we're trying to bind a note. And so uh, if we want to bind. So the first thing we want to bind the, um, we call this thing text. We want to bind the text property of it. And what do we want to put from there from our note? Oh my gosh, we want to put the text to the note. So recall, this is saying I have a, a, an array of notes. I have a list of notes. And my adapter is taking from that list and displaying it. And so it's putting it into this inflated view. Uh, that's in my view holder. I'm holding the, the view. And so the view holder is holding a pointer to the text, and I'm going to fill it in with the note. Um, and, you know, I'm gonna, I'll just put that here, like timestamp. That's also a text view. And, uh, you know, we have this format date thing. I could put, um, I could put note, uh, timestamp in here, and that would display the um, database formatted note, but I wanted to reformat, <laughs> wanted to reformat the timestamp so that it would look the same between um, um, the fire, uh, the Firebase uh, note app and this note app. It looks like I, I screwed up the translation a, a little bit there, but that's what, that's what that format date does. So this could just be note timestamp. Okay, I'm actually going to, um, to to sort of keep bind logically simple. I'm actually going to uh, do some of the operations in auxiliary functions. So I'm going to bind uh, expanded, and I'm passing in the adapter position. I'll explain what that means. I'm going to bind uh, pick one, which is the, the preview uh, pick, and I need to pass it the uh, image list. 
Okay. And uh, now this is this is sort of we haven't seen this this quite before. So I'm going to create yeah create an image adapter. An image adapter uh, um, holds a list of images. So I'll take a quick look at, at, the, at image adapter. You can potentially pass in a way to delete images, but it's a list adapter. And oh, look, it's got this super simple bind where we're accessing current list and we're passing in the adapter position. Uh, this is, uh, um, you know, this is a photo list row. Let's see what photo list row looks like. Photo list row. Looks like uh, an image button in a card view. So it's basically just, just an image. We make an image button so that we can long press it to delete. So image adapter. So, so bind happens in here. Um, I'm binding a, a, a nullable image, and, and if it's null, I should return, and that shouldn't happen. This is a little bit of an, an unholy hack. Um, I am reading the image path and creating the bitmap on the main thread, which you shouldn't do, but it just gets more complicated if you sort of do it the right way. The reason that you shouldn't do this is because it's a, a lot of work to decode a JPEG, so you want to do it on a background thread. And if you know you use Glide or some sort of image management, it will do all that stuff for you, but I wanted to keep this simple. And I actually sort of also wanted to show you, like, you can you know manipulate uh, images directly. And, there's actually ways of, you know, this this could be this is a, probably a very large bitmap, and I'm only going to display a smaller version of it, and so I could reduce the amount of work that that I do to decode it. Blah blah blah. There's a, a, a little bit of a yeah. This is a link if you're interested in that as, a, as an advanced topic. But the point here is, I'm grabbing this file, I am decoding it into a bitmap, and I am setting the uh, image bitmap. Um, to this photo IB, which is that little uh, preview. So this is photo IB. So in order to render this row, you know, I go here, and then I go back here, I render this row. This is the, uh, uh, the um, uh, photo IB uh, that I had de just decoded. OK, if my uh, image adapter is uh, um, um, has a, a delete callback, then uh, I call this function if the user long clicks to tell uh, whoever started me, like, hey, the user wants to delete this image. Otherwise, we, we don't allow long clicking. And, and that's it. So that's, it's not turtles all the way down. Image adapter is fairly simple. The notes adapter has an in image adapter in it. That's a, that's, that's a little interesting. Uh, Note row RV dot doctor doctor. So what we're doing here is we are creating an adapter in a row. And that's because each one of these elements in our uh, recycler view has an adapter. Uh, you know, potentially this, this unbounded list of, of images. So uh, that's this is the power for the power of recycler view. Uh, and adapter. Submit list, note, note, done. Submit list. Yep. Okay. So this is what we're doing on bind. Shoving the text into the text area. We're going to do something about the state, the expanded state of the note. Uh, we're going to do something about the uh, um, the uh, pick one. Uh, we're going to um, uh, potentially read and decode this uh, one of the images here. And then we've got a whole adapter that we are connecting to this note row RV. And so then note this row, this is the note row RV. So we actually have a recycler view in our row. And, what, and that means you know, here, this is a recycler view. Uh, sorry, this is, yeah, this is a recycler view um, in our row. And it's either expanded or, or contracted. So let's take a look at that. So bind, yes, bind. <laughs> well, let's take a look at it. Like, let's write it. Okay. Um, so if 
So we have this um, expanded list format. And we are going to remember for every position whether this position is expanded or not. And by default, nothing would be expanded. And if the user does expand something, uh, we will return true. OK, so uh, what do we do? Oh, that's OK, so one thing we want to do note row rv dot visibility. Now we used visibility a little bit in one of the early projects, but visibility is kind of a cool thing because it lets the runtime sort of manage a lot of very uh, nasty layout issues. And it's good at layout. You know, it's, it's what we want it does. So if this row is expanded, we want the recycler view to be visible. Otherwise, we want it to be gone. I can't remember right now what the difference is between gone and invisible, but we want it gone. So this is a neat trick that lets us have, we bind, we put all the information into the row. However, depending on the state of the expansion, we either see or don't see part of that row. So it's always there, we either see or don't see part of it. Oh yeah, the other thing we have to do is let's see if we are expanded we have to say that the chevron dot uh, set image resources so if we are expanded the chevron points down and if we are contracted the chevron points to the right so we actually have different um uh, icons for that Hard dot drawable dot I see it's called keyboard arrow down. So yeah, for some reason it's called that there and here. Shalom set image resource hard dot drawable. I see uh, it's actually called a chevron. chevron dot down. So that is uh, that is the chevron right black. That is the, chev the keyboard arrow down. OK, so th that's what expanded does. So we're keeping track of the expanded uh, position. Yeah, keeping track of the expanded position. And when we bind, we lay this out differently depending on, on our expansion state. Um, to uh, bind this pick one, Let's go to the what is it? Let's go to the image adapter. Remember this line. This is a bad thing to do. So let's do it again. Fine, uh, pick one. Okay. Um, here we are going to say. So if our image list is empty, then you might think, oh, you know, we don't have to do anything. But that's sort of a mistake because um, recall with a uh, view holder, you are, um, we're not uh, deallocating and reallocating this view object. We have an old view object, and we're giving you the old view object, and you have to set every single field. Because if there's a field you don't set, you're going to get the old value, and the old value is unpredictable. Because the old value could come from any old uh, uh, view as we're, as we're um, uh, scrolling through the list. So uh, a tip for binding, always assign to every cache pointer, you know, to every um, these are the cache pointers. These are the, the views that we are holding. You have to assign to all the views that you are holding. So what do I, what do I mean by that? In this case, um, this pick one V is a, what is it? Oh, it's an, it's an image. That's why I mean it this way. It's an image view. So we're going to set the background or something. Yeah, set image 
set image. Oh, it's empty. Yeah. So, so it's empty. We will set uh, image drawable. This is just a, a trick to, to do something that's sort of easy for the uh, um, runtime to create. We're going to create a color drawable out of the color transparent. Okay. So I have to explicitly set this image uh, um, image view. Uh, I am not going to set it to uh, uh, a bitmap. I'm going to set it to be transparent. So if there was an old bitmap there, uh, I've I've cleared that out. Okay. Now, uh, what if it? So this is if it is empty. It is empty. Um, if it's not empty, then uh, I need to decode this bitmap and pick ID set set image bitmap to this bitmap. Okay. Now again, this is you know. This is bad. I'm a bad person, uh, but you know, one, you know, sometimes you have to be bad to be good. Oh, wait a minute. Um, so this is damage. List. Yeah. So I'm trying to make sure whether there are any images here. If there is an image, I'll take the first one, and I will decode it manually. And I will I will put it in this uh, um, uh, in this preview section of the run. Okay, so that's uh, that's that's pretty good. And now now let's take a look at, at sort of what happens when we initialize our view uh, view holder. So the first thing that we have to do uh, for our recycler view is we have to define a layout manager. And we do this staggered grid layout manager, which gives us this nice sort of um, uh, you know, if there were more of them, it would give us this, this nice sort of layout. As we have a span count of two and it's, it's vertical. Um, how, how do we do edits? If the user does a long press on the text, we call edit note. What is edit note? It is a lambda that the user passed in. Okay. And that is, we're going to tell uh, the user, hey, we need to edit this note, and it's, uh, we need to edit this note at this position. And that, that's the code uh, before you saw the Lambda that uh, calls, uh, 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 swaps in the uh, uh, note edit fragment, swaps in the note edit fragment on this position. And then the Chevron also has a, a set on click listener. We find our position, and we uh, toggle it. So our expanded list position gets the opposite of whatever it was before. And then we call bind expanded because we have just changed the, uh, the display state. And so we have to rebind. And rebind means setting these values. Okay. And that's, that's, that's the whole shebang, which is, uh, there's a lot of shebang here. So uh, that's, it's, it's a lot to get through, and I think we've gotten through. So note edit, we've, we've uh, gotten through. Uh, you know, we, yeah, we, we got through most of this. Uh, we pass in the position. Remember that was the long press. Um, you know, if I come in here, uh, and if I, I'm a new note, I set the title to be one thing, and my image list is empty. If I'm editing, then I grab uh, the note from the current list. I initialize the text. Um, this is the edit text window. Um, I initialize the image list. I also request focus. That it's just a, a usability thing. If you long, long press this, if you long press this, it's sort of nice that you, you end up in this note. If you long, right? You know. Is more bearable. Uh, yeah, that, 
that album. Okay, save. Oh, look at that. Cool. Okay, it's a request. For, and then, you know, I, I also do my staggered um, grid layout in, in the, the uh, uh, edit view. Okay, uh, yeah. And then this is the long press for the, um, the uh, image adapter. Let's come back to this. Um, for right now, this is assume that we have an image adapter. We assign it to the photo uh, recycler view. Uh, we do our submit list. And then we have the different buttons. So cancel just pops the back stack. We're done. Camera button uh, calls a view model to take the photo, passes a, a callback. So let me know when the photo was done. When the photo was done, that's when I add this path into my image list. So, you know, and all the talk about referential integrity and stuff, this is, this is where it's going down. It's going down because I do not add anything to this image. At this point, I could ask the image view what uh, file name the file name is going to be, but I don't want to know. Um, I only want to know once uh, the picture has been successful and the system uh, remembers, the, the view model remembers the, uh, the picture path and sends it to me, and I add it to the list. Cancel, yeah, cancel pop by my sign. Okay, and then, and, then, uh, and then the save button, save button says, hey, did you write a, a note? If not, I will yell at you, you can write a note. Um, and then otherwise, if I'm creating a note, I call viewmodel.create note, and I pass in the text, and I pass in the image list, and uh, otherwise I'm updating the note, and I say what position I am updating, uh, and the text in the image list. Once, I'm, once, I'm, uh, once I do that, I'm done, I, I pop the back stack. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the one, uh, last piece we have to write, and this is a little... This is for uh, okay. So what I'd sort of like to do, I have this image list. I'd like to sort of do remove, remove. <laughs> I, I really like typing remote more than remove. I'd like to do remove at, right, is, I'm trying to delete an image. So this is telling me like, hey, delete, you know, the second image. So I'd like to do image list remove at, and then I'd like to do hey adapter, uh, hey image adapter. Uh, have I got a list for you? Uh, check out this new image list. This is sort of what I'd like to do. So why can't I do this? Um, well, you know, if I click around enough, it's going to tell me image list. Image list is a list. It's not a mutable list. So what I need is a shorter list that I will get from image list uh, to mutable list, okay? And then I will call remove at a shorter list. I will update my image list. And I will see. So Okay, this, this looks like a, a rigmarole, and, and it is. It's, it's a little bit of a pain, but this is the cost of using that list adapter. So remember I said, when you send two lists to the list adapter, they have to be, they have to have completely distinct references, which means you have to copy the list, and that's what two mutable list does. It actually copies it to a new list, which I then remove one item to, and then I, I do submit list, and I don't have to call, uh, uh, notify data set change. You know, is it worth it? I don't know. I mean, notify data set change can be expensive. This will be sort of minimal. Uh, I, I decided to do it. I thought it was, I thought it was worthwhile. Okay. Uh, I think that is all we got in notes. Oh, image roll. Oh, image roll. I'm going to leave image roll for a, a, another video. Um, I do want to go through the, the main view model. So the main view model uh, is a little bit of a kitchen sink. 
And that's, that's a little bit um, a consequence of the way we write apps. It's a little bit unfortunate, but um, by and large, view models are, are a pretty good thing. Um, but because they're, they're sort of the, the place where all the, the fragments communicate, they get a little complicated. So uh, I've got this um, Android view model that uh, allows us to get this application object, which gives us a context, which I use uh, to get the location of where to put my images. So we saw that in a previous video. I won't sort of get into that too much. We have some live data. We looked at the title. This is like super simple live data. This is the notes list. And the notes list interacts with the database a little bit. And, and that's the, the part I, I want to take a look at uh, here. So I've got a notes list and the notes adapter wants to observe the notes list. That makes sense. Um, when I toggle, I need to check to see if the notes list is empty. This, this is all very easy. If I actually want to get a note, I name it by position. And this is what I do. I get it from the notes list, which is in memory. This is not a, an on database concept. Okay, but let's take a look at an update note. So I'm updating a particular position with this text and image list. I get the note from the in memory representation. I update the text, I update the image list, and then I call this database helper routine to actually update the note. And there was a separate video where I showed the interaction with the database. Um, let's take a look at remove note. Remove note, I also call get note. Cool. Uh, I then call the database helper to remove that note. And then I have to update my uh, in memory cache. So my notes list, I know that I am caching all of the notes from the database. It's sort of not usually the case, but we're, we're going to uh, walk before we can run and uh, we'll do live data for the notes list in, in the Firebook uh, uh, demo. So uh, this, no this, this notes list, we need to generate a mutable list, remove the, the one note we have at this position, and then reassign uh, the new shorter notes list to the live data. And that will cause it to redisplay properly. That's what this one, to remove a note. <clears throat> um, in order to create a note, we call a DB help routine called, you guessed it, create note. Pass in text, image list, very good. And then just, at, to, we're done as far as the work on the database. We need to, um, so I mean, I say here, th there's sort of two ways to approach creating and deleting. One, uh, the database is, is the truth. There might be other users. So do whatever creation, delete, deletion, and then query again. And so you could just say at this point, um, uh, notes, List dot value get db help all notes. db help all notes will query all the notes. This is sort of always correct, and in some senses, you know, maybe sort of the, the better thing to do. Um, but uh, you know, I sort of like this idea of, uh, uh, of updating the in memory cache explicitly. So in that case. I will grab, I know that this exists. I will grab this as a mutable list. I will add my note to the beginning of the mutable list. <coughs> and then I will assign to the live data. You can see how those, those two things uh, should functionally be identical. Here I'm, I'm um, assuming things about the in-memory representation, and if I called uh, if I called all uh, all notes, I would not. I would be re refetching from the database. We're going to see that approach when we do the firebase. So, okay, that was I know a long walk. It's a little bit of a complicated uh, application, even though it's fairly simply specified. But this is finally where we're getting into sort of real Android programming. I mean, this stuff is this is real. I mean. Of course, real applications are even more complicated, but now we're, we're getting into all the, the issues that real applications get into. We managed to cover uh, most of the stuff. Uh, the one thing I didn't cover is image role. I will do that in a separate video. Thank you.